Hey, this is Mike, and today we're going to be looking at PAX Premier 2nd Edition, designed by Cole Whirl, and we'll be playing the solo variant designed by Ricky Royal. Quick disclaimer that this is a review copy of the game that we were sent, and if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the solo mode and how the game plays overall, go check out the review video. Also, a quick shout out to Liz from Beyond Solitaire. Uh, her video and talking to her is what got me interested in this game, and I'm glad she did. And also a shout out to Ricky Royal, not only as the solo designer, but he has a great video himself that uh, helped me to learn the rules for the solo mode. So thanks, Ricky. So let's first get into setup for the solo game. You're going to choose two player colors, one for Wakan, who is the sort of AI opponent you'll be going against, and one for yourself, and put them both in sort of this zero area over here to the left of the one. You'll also set to the beginning favored suit, which is always going to be political, the purple one right here with the crown. And you'll put out the ruler tokens, each on the matching region of the board. So you'll see Kabul has a pentagon, for example, and you have the pentagon token on the board. Next, you're going to build the draw deck for the game. And you've got a ton of these court cards, but you're only going to use seven times six because you're making six piles and each one is going to have seven court cards. It's a five plus the number of players, and we're counting the AI Wakan as one player. Now in these seven piles, the first one will have no events. The second pile will have two events, and you're gonna get six events overall that'll be uh, distributed. And again, this comes from a larger deck of events. And then you have one event in each other pile. So again, zero, two, and one for each of the other four piles. Then finally, you'll take four dominance checks, which are all identical, and you'll put them in the final four piles. And what you'll do is you'll shuffle each of these piles separately and build them one on top of the other. So you'll have dominance checks in uh, the bottom two thirds of the deck, but then uh, some non-dominance check area at the top of the deck. Next, you build the market and you're always gonna fill it uh, top to bottom, left to right. So I'll just lay out cards here until I have all the spaces filled. And you'll see they're pretty much going to be all court cards, but we might know. Okay, we didn't have any events in this case. So we've got these 12 cards laid out. And we put the rest of the draw deck nearby to fill as needed. Next, we set up our player pieces and we do the exact same thing for the Wakan AI. We put out our 10 cylinders covering these little spaces, which just provides an easier way to count how many you have in play. As you remove them, it'll just tell you right there how many you have. And uh, everyone also gets uh, four rupees, uh, the money in the game to use as they need. And the final step is to choose your loyalty. You can be with the Afghans, the Russians, or the British. And this is set in Afghanistan, so you could kind of be with uh, some patriot factions that want to rule the nation themselves, or with two of the imperialist forces that are trying to use Afghanistan for their own gain. Now, the main thing where you have to look at in deciding which of these coalitions to support at the beginning is uh, how many cards are out that can give you influence points with them. So some of the cards like Josiah Harland here have a Patriot icon that shows they're associated with one of the coalitions, in this case, the Afghan coalition. So having him would give us one influence points toward controlling that coalition. Other cards will have prizes on the bottom. This means basically if you assassinate this card, then you can use it to gain favor with the indicated coalition. So they would like you to kill this person. So in this case, the only Patriots we have on the board currently is one Afghan and one Russian with the bear. And prizes, we have a ton of British prizes, four of them, but those are tougher to get than just uh, purchasing and playing the Patriots. So I guess I'll go with the Afghan. That one's going to be a little bit further left, and assuming Wakan doesn't get it, then uh, I can certainly do so. All right, and with that, we're ready to look at the play of the game and how the AI functions. So generally speaking, Wakan follows all the same rules that a player does, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the rules as we go, because they are a bit complicated, but uh, they flow pretty well once you know them. So Wakan's got this AI deck that determines all of her actions. So you shuffle that up at the beginning and uh, she always takes the first turn. And all you do is you flip over the topmost card and you put it next to the deck and you get uh, these little black and red arrows pointing at things that uh, will help to determine what Wakan's going to do. And the most important thing is the rightmost card. It has a bunch of uh, tiebreakers, for example, which faction or coalition is Wakan associated with. And she's always going to be with the leftmost one that you are not a part of. So I'm Afghan right now. So that means that she will be British for this turn. But she can basically use all of the coalitions. She can have cards for all of them. Whereas uh, if I have some Afghan uh, patriots and then I switch and get a Russian patriot, I have to kill all the Afghan ones. So uh, you can only be with one as a player at a time, but Wakan is with all of them. Then we've got Wakan's actual actions. The basic idea is on every player's turn, including Wakan's and mine, uh, you'll be able to take two actions. And Wakan will try to take each action going from top to bottom. 
um, until she eventually gets down to Radicalize, which she can basically always take. So if she has a card that lets her betray, because except for Radicalize, all the rest of these actions will require a card in her tableau, and she doesn't have any yet. Uh, so she would try to betray first. If she can't do that, she would try to battle on the highest priority court card. Clearly she can't do that yet. And then she would Radicalize. So for a player, the two main actions are purchasing a card from the market or playing that card into your tableau. For Wakan, she has this special radicalized action that does both. So basically on her turn, she will often be buying and playing cards immediately, and we'll kind of see all the stuff associated with that. And then finally at the bottom here, we have a tiebreaker for regions. So if she has to pick a region to do something in, uh, she'll use the leftmost one that applies. So for her first action, again, she can't betray and she can't battle because she has no tableau cards that would allow those actions. So she's going to radicalize for her first of two actions. And to see which card she prefers to buy, we look at the uh, black arrow that's pointing to the four spot. So she's going to buy a market card in the four spot if possible. And then uh, this red arrow is pointing to the bottom and right. Uh, these would be tiebreakers again. So she's going to prefer a card in the bottom row in the fourth position. Let's go over and look at the market and see what that means. So as you see, the cards in the market are marked in columns. And this is the cost to buy the card. So to buy one in the four, you have to spend four rupees to be able to purchase it. You've also got a top and a bottom row. And as we said, in this case, Wakan is going to prefer to purchase a card in the bottom in the fourth position, which right now would be this Russian patriot, Alexander. Alexander. And how purchasing works in the game, you have to put rupees on every card to the left of the card you're actually purchasing. That's why it costs four, because there's four cards to the left. That is Wakan's entire purchase strength, so she will indeed do that, and that will get her this card. Now, if she doesn't have enough money to purchase, which we'll see in just a second, then she'll do something else. But first, let's show you what happens when you play a card. Because again, Wakan's Radicalize action buys a card from the market and immediately plays it. We can't do that. Uh, the player has to use one action just to purchase the card and another action to play it. So uh, she goes a lot faster with that kind of stuff than we do. So when you play a card, it goes into the tableau. The first card will just go down, but for every future card, it'll either go to the left or the right, so you kind of build this longer tableau. And uh, the tiebreaker will determine which side it goes to. So right now the red is pointed to bottom in parentheses right. So if she uh, bought another card, which she's about to, it would go to the right of uh, all the other cards in her tableau. So whenever a player plays a card, you first have to check if the region that card's associated with is ruled by another player. So in this case, if I had the little Persia ruling token, then Wakan would have to pay me some money to be able to play this card. But clearly nothing's on the board yet, so we don't have to worry about that. Next, we're going to resolve the impact icons on the card. In this case, these are spy icons, and there's two of them. So when this guy goes down, Wakan is going to place two of her cylinders as spies. If cylinders are on cards, they are spies. If they're on regions of the board, they are tribes that help to control the regions and make you the ruler of them. Now, when you play spy, they can go on any card that's associated with the region of the card placing them. So in this case, they can go on any Persian card. But since the only one in play is Wakan, they're both going to go on there. And a quick note about spies and tribes. First of all, whoever has the most cylinders can potentially win victory points and eventually win the game when you get to dominance checks. We'll get to those later. But for spies themselves, they tend to protect your own cards because if another player has more spies on your own card than you do, then that card is held hostage and to use its actions, you have to pay the uh, player with the more spies money. But additionally, if you can get spies on someone else's card, then you can uh, betray them or attack their spies on that card. So uh, spies can be pretty useful, just like tribes can. All right, so now we take Wakan's second action. And again, she can't betray, she can't battle. Uh, this guy does have an action. So these little icons at the bottom are actions. This is a movement action, but there's nothing to move on the board yet. No armies or anything. So we're just going to go to another radicalized purchase. Now, Wakan still prefers to purchase the card in the fourth spot on the bottom, but clearly she can't because there is no card there. And another rule is you can never purchase a card that you have put rupees on in the current round. So Wakan already uh, put money on these ones. So all of these are locked out to her. So once she sees that she can't buy any of the cards in the preferred row, she's going to switch to the other row. And again, she wants the fourth card, but she doesn't have enough rupees now. She started with four and she spent them all. So she's going to count down until she can afford one, which will be the Akali Sikhs from the Punjab, uh, because they cost zero. And that's the only one she can afford. Now, these Sikhs have battle actions, so Wakan will be able to attack me potentially later on if we share spaces or cards together. But for now, as the tiebreaker said, this card is going to go to the right of her tableau and it has two impact icons of little standing armies. So this means Wakan will place two armies in the Punjab in the indicated region. 
Which armies will she place? We look at her pragmatic loyalty, which is, again, the leftmost one that we are not. We are Afghan, so she is British. And you've got this nice plastic holder for all of the uh, armies and roads. These things are both armies if they're standing up or roads if they're uh, laying down across a border. And these guys will go again to the Punjab. Now these pieces are super important, whether they're roads or armies. If one coalition, one color has four more than any other color, so for example, if Britain had four guys out and the other ones had none out, then Britain would be the dominant coalition, which again can have effect on dominance checks later in the game and can determine who wins. Finally, we do the cleanup step. The first thing we look at is the player's tableau. You can only have three cards in your tableau plus the number of purple stars on cards in your tableau, which is the political kind of ruling cards of the game. So as an example, if uh, Wakan had this Transcapian political card, the one star would let her have four maximum cards in her tableau. But without it right now, the max is only three, but she's fine. For a player, you would also check their hand size because you can hold cards in your hand without playing them. The max is two plus the number of blue stars you have, but Wakan never keeps anything in hand, so we can skip that step for her. Next, if there are any event cards in the zero space of the board, they get discarded for an effect, but there aren't any out yet. And then finally, we slide all the cards down and fill in again uh, from left to right, top to bottom. So we've got some Persian slave markets and we have our first event. Events are a little bit different because, uh, first of all, as noted, if they get all the way to the left at the end of that round during cleanup, they'll get resolved for their discarded effect, which for this one is nothing. But if you buy them, instead of having to play them, their effect is resolved immediately. Although this one, uh, public withdrawal, cannot be purchased. It just kind of sits there, and if money goes on it, it uh, gets removed from the game. Because this is a closed economy, I have my four rupees, and Wakan has uh, her four rupees, which are currently on cards. And that's it. There are some cards with leverage. Uh, there aren't any out right now for me to show you, but they can uh, inject more money into the economy. But uh, for now, eight rupees is the entirety of what we can get. But one thing I did forget to say is that besides the two actions each player gets per turn, you can also take as many actions with cards matching the current uh, ruling suit as uh, you like, although each card can only perform one action. So if Wakan had any purple cards, they could do one action with each of them for free on top of their regular two actions. But currently Wakan is only blue and red, so we're skipping that. So here we have to decide what cards we might want to buy, and we've got four rupees, so we could buy anything all the way up to the four level. But I'm mainly looking at these cards that Wakan has put uh, rupees on, because I'd love to get that money for myself, because whenever you purchase a card, any rupees on it, you gain. So looking at those, we've got Bala Hassar in Kabul, who would give us access to a tax action that can get you more rupees, and also the betray action that can kill cards that you have your spy on, which is a great way to mess with the opponent's tableau. We've got Baluchi Smugglers, who will give me two roads, that's what these little uh, camel icons are, and an army, so that would be a great way to get whichever coalition I'm currently allied with. Uh, the one you're allied with are the color you put down to be stronger on the board. I've got the Harati Bandits, oh, here's the leverage icon, so this would give me two extra rupees, again, making the economy bigger, but if they get killed, I have to discard those again, and they would also give me one spy. And then we'd already looked at Josiah Harlan, who is a patriot and would give me one tribe on the board, although it is the Punjab, which is where uh, Wakanda's dropped those two British uh, armies. And you only rule if you have the most tribes and armies in a place and you have to have at least one tribe there. So uh, since I'm not allied with the British, those armies would actually prevent me from ruling the Punjab. I've also got some generally powerful cards up on top. I've got a double spy card in Kandahar, and he's got these little, uh, some cards have these special abilities, not too many. So this one is Safe House. When another player removes your spy in battle, you may place it on this card instead, so my spies would be very tough to kill with this. I've got my own potential Punjab army that would have a double battle action. I can do gifts with money, and it would let me place uh, two armies down. Got another one that has two armies and a spy and a betray action. And then a really nice uh, political card in Transcapia that would give me a spy and a tribe and would change the preferred suit to uh, military red, which might not be great for me because, uh, again, Wakan already has a red card, so I don't necessarily want to give her free actions in return with that. So for now, I do want to get two that are going to help me get some units on the board so the British can't just run away with things. So I'll get this military card, which will let me put two armies down, and will give me a big battle. And the cool thing is, this is in the Punjab, where the uh, British already are. So I could, in one turn, put down, like if I save this card for this turn, next turn I could put down this card for my first action, and then do a battle action for my sec second action, and just wipe out the British in the Punjab and uh, give uh, my Afghan allies some dominance. 
And then I think I'll just take this free card here to get the money back and give me four again. Again, I couldn't take this card for Kandahar because my money from the turn is on it. You can't take something you've already put money on this turn. So those are both in my hand. I don't have a tableau yet. And again, you can hold two cards in your hand as a player, uh, plus one for each blue star in play but I don't have any, so that'll be the end of my turn. So we can do cleanup, nothing to really worry about here, except just moving all the cards down with the money on them. And we get the Kyber Pass in the Punjab, and another event, uh, Riots in Herat, or Nationalism. All right, back to our friend Wakan. Let's see what she does. So this turn, her Pragmatic Loyalty is gonna make her Russian instead of British, although again, she still like works happily with all of the coalition. She's not really allied with any of them. Okay, let's see. If no coalition has dominance, which is the case, the British only have two armies, and you need four more than everybody else, radicalize the card that would place the most spies and or tribes. Now remember, Rakan still has no rupees, so she can only look at the ones in the zero place, because that's all she can afford. And this Kandahar card will split, place two spies, and she's looking for spies or tribes, the little cylinders. The Herat one will only place roads and armies. So she's going to radicalize this one for zero cost, and she does get the rupee on it. And the little tiebreaker this time is pointing to right. So this is going to go to the right of her tableau. And she immediately gets two spies for impact icons. But uh, this is the only Kandahar card in play. So again, she's just kind of putting her own spies on the board. Okay, now we get to the next action. If military cards are favored, they aren't. Political is still the favored suit. So she's just going to do a regular radicalize. And this time it's pointing to the zero space. And this says uh, bottom right. So she wants the zero card in the bottom row. And I'm sad she's playing this. This is a pretty good one. Uh, Baluchi Smugglers. She's going to get to place two roads and an army in Herat. And these are all going to be Russian because, remember, that's her pragmatic loyalty this turn. And she'll get one money. The ability says you do not pay for Herat cards in the market. So uh, that might help her down the line when she's buying something later. And her preference is still on the right here. She's got two rupees. And she's going to place three Russian blocks on the board, giving the Russians a little leg up on the British. And my Afghans are way behind. So there is one army in Herat, and then two roads going out of Herat. And this is where her little preference for regions comes in. She's going to try to go to the uh, first one she can get to. So circle's too far away. A star she can get to, so that'll be one of the roads. And then uh, this little octagon, that's already it. So square into Kandahar. So now we've got roads going there. Now for me, a player, armies can only move along roads that match their color if they want to go and attack somebody somewhere else. But Wakanda does not have that limitation. Uh, she can move people anywhere. So the roads just kind of act as something to boost the power of one of those factions. Now Wakanda has four cards in her tab below during the cleanup phase this time. And she still has no purple cards to take extra free actions. Remember, you can only have three cards plus the number of purple stars. She has none. So she has to discard one card, and you do have this little flow chart to determine which one you're going to go for. So first, non-political. None of them are political, so that doesn't help. Non-patriot, so she will not get rid of this guy since that's a Russian patriot. Non-leverage. None of these guys have the little uh, icon that gives you two more rupees. Uh, most player spies, more than Wakan spies. I don't have any spies on her card. Fewest spies. Okay, there we go. So now it's either Baluchi Smugglers or Akali Seeks. Lowest rank, that's the stars. They're both two stars. Not matching favored climate. None of them are purple, so that doesn't help at all. So the final tiebreaker is lowest card number. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but in the bottom right corner of each card, you've got a little card number. So in this case, the Akali Seeks are 38. The uh, Baluchi Smugglers are 66. So uh, Wakanda is going to discard this card, and everything just kind of condenses in to form a consistent tableau. And again, all the cards slide down. We do have a lot of purple cards, which remember will be free actions if we get them. Okay, we got another Punjab card, another Herat card. So I definitely want to get uh, one of these purple cards, I think. Again, for the free actions, and also it lets you put tribes down, potentially control territory. So the Transcapia one would give me a tribe and a spy, and change the preferred suit to red, which uh, would not help Wakan right now because uh, she doesn't have any red cards anymore. She threw away her only one. But if I play my little Punjab army later, actually both my guys are red, so that seems great for me. Now this other one gives me an Afghan influence, but there's no Afghan uh, blocks on the board right now. And if I switch to be with the British or the Russian, I would have to kill that guy anyway. So I'm not really uh, feeling like I need to dedicate myself to the Afghan cause quite yet. So here I'm going to buy uh, this guy in Transcapia. And I should play a card because I've got three cards in my hand, which means that if I don't play them, I'm going to have to uh, discard one. And I don't really want to play my uh, Punjab card yet because Wakan could attack me. 
What I'm thinking instead is if I play my Transcapian Guard, oh darn, I'm not gonna get a free action this turn. I thought I would, but he's gonna immediately change the preferred suit to military, which means I won't get any free actions for him being a purple card. And I haven't gotten any actions much yet. That's because we haven't had the chance to use them and Wakan hasn't used them, but you will see how they all work as we go through. So even though he won't do anything for me, he will set me up for red being preferred suit uh, next round, and then I can play these guys and get immediate actions with them. So that seems pretty good to me. I'm going to put my first Tableau card down, in this case, uh, Mir, Murad, Big, and Transcapia. So I'll put one Spy Cylinder on him, because he is the only Transcapia card in play. I'm going to put one Tribe on the board in Transcapia, and I'm going to switch the preferred suit to Military. So here's my Tribe, and as long as you have at least one Tribe, and then you have the most represented mix of Tribes and Armies, in an area, then you become the ruler of it. So I'm gonna take this little token. And the most important thing for this is, first of all, I can build with a build action in here and like make more armies. But also if the uh, AI, my opponents like Wakan, try to play a Transcapia card, they would have to pay me rupees uh, equal to the number of tribes in this space. And then don't forget the preferred suit is chasing to red. And this is more significant than it might seem because while the preferred suit is red, buying anything from the market costs twice as much as normal. You have to put down two rupees on each card to the left of the one you're buying, which will uh, potentially limit me and Wakan quite a bit. So with only one tableau card and two cards in hand, I am currently fine. So we're just gonna slide these things down. Okay, and here's our first dominance card. Now this is what's gonna determine who wins the game and how you get victory points. So let's go over to the board and kind of talk about what a dominance check looks like. And a dominance check happens, by the way, when one of us buys this, or if a second dominance card, remember there's four in the entire deck, comes out at the same time. So a dominance check goes one of two ways. If one of the coalitions, uh, one of the colors on the board, uh, meaning these blocks, not our tribes, is dominant. So again, they have four more than anybody else. So right now, Britain has two and Russia has three. Russia would need to have six roads and armies combined to be dominant over Britain. If one coalition is dominant, then you look at who is allied with that coalition. Or right now, I'm allied with Afghan. And once you figure out who's allied with them, you then look at how much influence they have. So everyone who's allied has one influence point automatically. And then you get plus one for every one of your Patriot cards. You get plus one for every one of the prizes that matches that coalition that you've killed through assassination. And also if you've used one of the actions called gifts to pay some rupees to put a uh, cylinder on this as a gift, that'll also give you one influence point. Whoever has the most influence with the faction will get five victory points. And uh, if the other player also has some influence with the faction, they'll get three victory points. Now Wakan, remember, is counted as being allied to every faction, even the one that I'm with. So uh, she'll always get at least that three. And how you win is after a dominance check, if you are four ahead of your opponent, you immediately win. So if you can kind of run away with things, then uh, you will win the game that way. Now, the other way a dominance check can go, and uh, this is the case currently, is if nobody is dominant, no one is ahead by at least four, then instead you look at the number of cylinders that each player has in play. That counts both spies and tribes and gifts. So here, Wakan is a uh, four out. I only have two. So... Uh, whoever has the most gets three victory points. Whoever has second most gets one victory point. And again, if you get ahead by four, you win. All right, with all that fun stuff out of the way, let's get into Wakan's turn. So this turn, they are allied with Russia again. Okay, if no coalition is dominance, that is the case. Radicalize the card that would place the most spies and or tribes. She's uh, doing that again. Now she has uh, two rupees. Remember, all costs are doubled. So she can only look at the one or the zero space because if she bought a one, she'd have to put two rupees on whichever card she didn't buy. Now it said uh, the card with the most spies or tribes. We've got one tribe here, one spy here, one spy here. So all three of those are tied. The tiebreaker for this kind of purchase is next, which one is cheaper. So she would go for one of these two and not for this one that would make her spend two. And then really simple tiebreaker. She'll go to more complicated ones later. She's gonna go for the highest value card, which in this case is the Harati Bandits. So she gets the one rupee on there and she's gonna get two more rupees. This is adding money to the uh, bank overall because they have this leveraged icon. And again, it's pointing to the right. So this is gonna go to the right side of her tableau. And she's gonna add another spy. She's just spied all over the place. Now, don't forget, she can put the spy on any Harat card and notice that the Baluchi smugglers are also Harat. Now, I don't have any. So in choosing a card, she's going to go down this list of priorities. So she can't choose an opponent's card. She can't choose favored suit because neither of them is red. Uh, neither of them is a patriot. Neither of them has a prize that matches the dominant coalition because there is none. This one is leveraged, so she's going to put it on her rot. That matters more to her than the fact that this one has two rank and this one has one. Oh, I didn't uh, call out the special ability on these guys. At the start of your turn, you may place a spy on any Harat court card without a spy. And she'll always take advantage of those when she can. 
Okay, we continue down trying to resolve actions. Battle on the highest priority court card with the most spies. Uh, we don't have... Battling uh, would have to have both my spies and hers on one card. We don't have that. So she's just going to radicalize, trying to buy the zero card in the bottom row. And it just so happens she already bought that, so she's going to go to the zero card in the top row, which will be the Giselle Sharpshooters. She's getting another rupee. She's going to put two Russian armies down, almost giving them dominance and a spy. Okay, and this guy's going to the right, and she has a lot of money. Now, she has two Kandahar cards, and I don't have any, but uh, she'll always prefer the card that has the least spies. So she'll put one on Kandahar before, like, even checking the other, like, little things that might be tiebreakers. She's additionally placing two Russian armies in Kandahar, and again, you can see at a glimpse, that's why this little plastic tray is nice, that uh, Britain is three behind her, but not quite four, so Russia is not quite dominant. But it's definitely troublesome for me because uh, <laughs> the thing is, if I'm not even in the ruling faction, if it's dominant, when a dominance check happens, then uh, she'll get five victory points and I'll get zero and she'll immediately win. So if Russia is going to be that dominant, I have to jump in there or I have to play enough tokens or attack Russia to make it not dominant anymore. Now, she has taken her two actions, but hold on. She now has a card in the favored suit and you always go left to right. So she can resolve. Uh, she would try to do the leftmost action box on here. But the only action the Giselle sharpshooters have is the betray action. That's how many rupees it costs, and you put them on the rightmost cards in the market, not the uh, leftmost, like when you're buying. And Betray will allow her to pay those two rupees to murder a card. Uh, she can murder my own cards, or she can murder her own cards that have a prize. This is something Ricky Royal uh, clarified in the FAQ. Uh, she will kill her own cards if they have a prize. So she's actually going to do that. She's going to kill one of her own cards. So she spends two rupees. And again, whenever you spend something from an action, it goes on the rightmost cards. And it's always even numbers. So you'll do the same on top and bottom instead of uh, like when you're purchasing over here. So for who she's going to kill, she goes to priority. And again, she's only looking at cards that have a prize. So she wants to kill an opponent's card. She can't. Uh, matches the favored suit. So she wants to kill these guys in Kandahar. So they are going to uh, betray themselves. And this kind of gets tucked under just to show that it's a uh, a prize for her. The spy goes back on her board. And this does mean that even if I jumped in and tried to like control Russia, since it has so many armies and roads, uh, she would have two influence with them plus her natural one. So that would be way ahead of me. Now we're getting to clean up, but don't forget we still have to get rid of another card because she has four and because she has no purple, she can only have three in her tableau. She wants non-political, none of them, a non-patriot, so this guy's a patriot, non-leverage, so she'll ignore him, and then we get the fewest spies. So usually it's going to be the one with no spies, so the Baluchi smugglers are gone. So she is entirely blue right now, which means we cannot let blue become the favored suit. All right, things are moving down. We get a Kandahar political card and a new event. All right, I've got three rupees, so I could buy, like, one of these and spend a bunch of money. Or I could buy one of these for free. But don't forget, I've also got these red cards I can play. And because red is the favorite suit, I would get to use a free action from each of them if I did so. It seems a little too good to ignore because it'll also kind of hopefully even up the uh, figure count for the Afghans. See, I think I'm going to play these both. So you can put them on either side of your tableau. And that can be important for like spies getting on your cards. Although it doesn't matter as much with the AI because they never move spies in the AI rules. So I'm going to leave my spy on the uh, left side where it can jump over and attack some Wakan cards and assassinate them maybe someday. So he's going to place one army in Kabul and two in the Punjab. And don't forget, these are always one that I'm associated with. Unlike Wakan, who can change which army it is. So these are going to be all Afghan. So Kabul is pretty crowded and uh, Punjab is as well. Now, those are my two actions, but red is currently favored, so I can take a free action out of these two for each of these guys. Bala Hassar in Kabul has a taxation action and the betray action we already talked about. Taxation lets you take the indicated number of rupees, which is equal to his rank, so only one here. You can always take them from cards in the market, but additionally, if you rule a region like I rule Transcapia and an opponent has at least quite one card in that region, you can take money straight from them, but in this case, that doesn't apply. So I can't betray anybody. I don't have any of my spies on their place. I mean, I guess I could kill my Transcapian guy to switch to British, but they're not doing that well, so I don't want to do that. So I will just go ahead and tax this one rupee away from Josiah Harlan, uh, because again, these ones all the way over here, I don't think anybody's going to get for a little while, especially with all the costs doubled by red being the preferred suit. As for the Punjab card, I can either buy a gift, which would cost uh, whichever choice of rupees I would spend, and I'll get to put one of my cylinders there, and it would give me an extra influence with the Afghans. Or I can do a battle. In this case, uh, because he's a two-star, I can do a double battle. Now, you can battle on cards if you both have spies on there, but that's not the case. 
Or alternatively, you can pick a single region and uh, you can kill an opposing tribe or army or road in that region, uh, one for each of the little battle icons, but not exceeding the number of armies you have there. So I have two armies here, so I could, with the double icon, kill both of these British armies and just clear out there. Or with my one guy here, I could kill one army in Kandahar, even though I had two icons, I only have one army to actually attack with. Now that seems like the better option, because as we saw, Wakhan already has a lot of Russian uh, loyalty and influence, and also Russia is clearly winning, so I want to slow them down. With my one purple star, I can have a maximum of four cards in my tableau, so I'm fine there. And I didn't actually buy anything, so nothing to slide down. So we're going over to Wakhan. Let's see, first Wakhan is trying to attack. So we look at her cards and we see if any of them have a tax action. In this case, the Harati bandits do. Oh, and by the way, I'll say that uh, it says at start of turn, you may place a spy on a Harat card without one, but the only Harat card right now is this and it has a spy, so that doesn't apply. So each card can only be used once. We can kind of take that up to show. So she's gonna tax one. If she ruled a region that I had a card in, she could take one of my money, but but she doesn't. And uh, in this case, her preference is the top row, so she's gonna take this money from the dominance check. And by the way, speaking of the dominance check, she will always try to buy it if she's currently winning in how the victory points will be determined, which she is, because she has more cylinders down. But it would cost her two, four, six, eight to buy. She does not have that much, although she's close. So um, she will skip that action. But yeah, she does try to get dominance if she can. And additionally, if a coalition was dominant, like if the Russians were ahead by four, she would try to get Russian patriots whenever possible. But uh, here that doesn't apply because nobody's dominant. All right, next action she would do is betray. I would love for her to do that and kill one of her cards for a prize again, but she doesn't have anything that betrays right now, so she can't. So instead she will radicalize looking at the zero space on the top. So that gets her this Oasis card with some nice taxing and movement actions on there and two roads being placed in, oh, Transcapia, where I have my tribe. I don't know if I like that. This time she is placing it to the left of her tableau. There we go. I know, probably good for us. She actually switched to being British for this round instead of Russian, so the roads will be British. And they're coming out of Transcapia. So let's see, she wants to get to the star first into Persia. Uh, circle's too far away, square's too far away, so she's going into Herat. And she still has no purple. I mean, I've been trying to buy them whenever they're around, so uh, she's going to have to discard. In this case, we're going to go to the fewest spies as the tiebreaker again. She'll lose the card she just bought, which I'm totally happy with. But that does bring our friendly dominance check closer to being purchased by her, and right now I'm still losing. So I would like to get this purple card before she can, so I think for my first action I'll buy that for free. And the question is, do I want to buy something else? The one that kind of appeals to me is this Persia card, specifically because it would change the favored suit to blue. And again, every single card Wakan has right now is blue. So I almost want to buy that just to deny it to her and just kind of leave it sitting in my hand. Yeah, you know what? I am uh, gonna do that, I think. I won't actually play any new cards yet. So um, normally I would put it on the space to the left, but that's empty. So you instead jump to the other uh, row when you have to. So that's where my two money goes. Again, it's two money because red is the favored suit. But I do see that Wakan has five rupees, so still can't afford the dominance check yet, which uh, works in my favor, I think. All right, so I do get my free actions for the favored suit. I'm going to taxi uh, the leftmost card there to get a rupee because I can't betray anybody. And then I guess I'll do a battle again. So let's see. Britain is now tied up with Russia, but I have a purple card that's going to put a tribe in the Punjab, and then these British soldiers could potentially kill it. So let's uh, get rid of them with my battle action. And uh, that still puts me behind uh, Russia. I mean, no one's really going to be dominant, which means it's probably going to come down to cylinders. And unfortunately, they are definitely ahead on those. And oh, uh, we're going to get some events getting discarded soon. We'll have to look at what those will do to us. Okay, we got some nomads and another political card up there. All right, Wakan, what are you going to do? So first, again, you always check Wakan's ambition. As I said, she has five rupees. She would need six to buy the dominance card. So she's uh, not going to be able to do that yet. So next we see if Wakan has fewer than two rupees, radicalize the card. If she doesn't have fewer than two. Next, she wants to build, and she can build. Now, building is an action. You can spend two, four, or six rupees, and you will uh, build that many armies and or roads, but it has to be in a location that you rule, and she does not rule anywhere, so she can actually build, and we'll skip that one, go right to radicalize. In this case, she wants a card in the three position on the top, and yes, she does want that. That's the dominance check, but she can't afford it, so she'll go to the left and instead buy this bazaar, which will cost her four rupees, uh, two there and two there. I love that, leaving with only one, and she'll get this. 
Although, uh, she's going to put a spy on a Punjab card, which will be mine, not hers. And she's going to put a road down on the Punjab. And let's see. We're going to the left again. So there it is. And yeah, she always prefers my cards if she can, so she can potentially betray them later and discard them. So she's going to put the spy on this Punjab card. And I'll note, by the way, that if I had gotten my purple guy out and I was ruling the Punjab, it would have, uh, she would have had to pay me a rupee to play that, which would have been beautiful. Our current loyalty is back to Russia, so that'll be the road. And you can see the relative power here. Uh, Russia is again in the lead, although only ahead by two. Let's see, according to her tiebreaker, she wants to build the road that way. Okay, for her second action, uh, she would like to radicalize the card that will net her the most rupees. Uh, because now we go back up at the top now that we've done Radicalize, and she does have less than two right now. But sad for her, there are actually no cards that she can buy because she placed rupees on these ones this turn, and you can't buy Public Withdrawal, so she uh, cannot Radicalize. In that case, since none of these apply, she's going to go to her card actions, even though they aren't free, and use her second action with the leftmost one on the leftmost card, which is a Taxation. And she always takes uh, from the leftmost card that she can, so she'll grab one from the slave market to Persia. And as you can imagine, she has to throw this away because she has no political cards. I've been denying them to her, so she can't have more than three. But Dominance check keeps on creeping down. And remember, if another one comes out, which could happen, then a Dominance check will be triggered automatically. Now, additionally, because there's an event card in the left, we uh, discard it, although it has no effect in this case. Now, I have an event that's going to be discarded automatically if I don't buy it, which is Riots in Herat. Remove all tribes and armies in Herat. The only an army in Herat right now is a Russian army, so I am happy to let that thing go away. Ooh, I have an interesting option. Um, I can get this Persia card for my first action and then play it. That would put a spy on any Persia card, which could be a one of Wakan's card. And then I could betray it to kill that card which would get rid of two of her spies, but also one of mine. Now, it wouldn't be enough to even up the cylinder count, which means, and then I would also be letting the dominance check go down so that she could win that. So maybe I don't want to get that. I could instead play my guy to get another cylinder on the Punjab, and they won't be able to buy the dominance check yet unless they get some more rupees, so I could try to slow pay things and maybe make the Afghans dominant. But, you know, I feel like she's going to get that dominance check eventually anyway, and that would make her pretty poor, so... <sighs> Darn it, let's go ahead and get the Persia card. All right, so I get two rupees for grabbing that. I also get two more, because it's a leverage card, so now I'm pretty rich. I put it on either side of things, so let's just put it right there. I get an Afghan road out of Persia. I guess let's go to Herat. And I also get a spy on a Persian card, so let's go there. And I'll note for the betray action, it doesn't matter if you outnumber them, that's only for having a card be held hostage. Uh, all that matters is that you have a spy presence there to kill the card. So I still have my two free red actions. So I will betray with the cobble one. That's going to put uh, two money on, again, the rightmost cards of the market. In this case, I will be killing this Russian guy, which, oh, is a prize for Afghans. Now I've got two Afghan influence, which is nice. And there are two spies go back. My one goes back. That puts me a two to four, so still pretty far behind. I can also do uh, these guys, but look, they've got a spy here holding me hostage for one rupee. So to take this action, I have to pay them one. I guess I'll still do it, though. So I'll do my attack action. And I could choose here and kill the road or here and kill the army. The army worries me more. So I've actually tied up Russia. We both got four and Britain's behind with two. But again, I would have to have eight or kill a lot more Russian uh, units to be able to do more. I wish I had roads to move these guys around. Then I could really do some damage. And I'm still okay with cards because my one purple card. And we do remove this event. So we're going to remove all tribes and armies in Herat, which is just one Russian one. That means I'm actually ahead of the Russians and the British right now. And everything slides down. And that dominance check is certainly within purchasing range. Persia card. Another event. Wakan still flips a card, but we're not even going to look at her first action. She, if she is again winning in dominance, which she is because she has more cylinders out, will always buy the dominance check with Wakan's ambition if she can. So that means she's going to pay two to here, and she discards this. And no coalitions or dominance. We're just going to a cylinder comparison. She has four out. I have only two. Sadly, she is ahead by two. Remember, if she gets ahead by four, I lose. Now, by the way, when a coalition is dominant during a dominance check, then you wipe out every colored uh, space on the entire board. All the armies, all the roads. You just keep the tribes. But in a dominance check like this, where nobody was dominant, we leave them all out. All right, with our first required action done, we now go to their actual options. A battle on the highest priority court card with the most spies. She doesn't even have a battle action, which means the second one doesn't apply either, so she's just going to radicalize. So she wants card three on the bottom, but she only has one rupee, so I guess she's going to get the leftmost card. In this case, that'll be the Karakul Sheep, which will put uh, two roads in Herat. 
going on the right. And hey, she won't have to discard a uh, card for once. She is currently Russian. So she's placing two roads from her rod. And she doesn't care if she uh, places more than one over the same border. She just follows the order. So here, oh, actually interesting, <laughs> the order on the card did go from left to right into the two places she hadn't been to yet. All right, so darn it, darn it, darn it. I need to get something going here. Okay, no new dominance check. Let's see, okay, if this uh, event that's on the left right now gets discarded, gifts will not be worth influence until the next dominance check, which would only kind of hurt me because I'm the only one who might be doing gifts, it looks like right now. But I'm pretty far ahead if I can get the Afghans to be dominant, so I'm not really worried about that. All right, I kind of got to get the Kyber pass, right? That's four rupees on it, so yeah. But now if I don't play a card, oh crud, I kind of got to play the purple card, I'll have to discard something. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll put that over here. That gives me three Afghan influence because he's a patriot. Now he's got to get their armies to win. So I do get a tribe on the Punjab. So there we go. And I certainly have the most armies and uh, tribes there. So I'm going to gain the ruling token. All right, I can do my free actions. Um, so I guess I'll tax uh, one of the cards up here. And then I'll give them a money to use this because they still have it held hostage to do a battle action. And yeah, I mean, we can still just attack these Russian ones. So we'll do that one. All right, so these all slide down. And uh, this stays next to the board, reminding us that uh, gifts are not worth anything until the next dominance check. This will also slide down. Okay, we got uh, Kandahar. Oh, and there's another dominance card. So they'll try to buy that if they can because they're still ahead by cylinders. So they will win if they buy that, unless I change things. So let's see what they do. First, they will radicalize a card that will gain Wakan control of a region. Because again, they can't do the ambition. They don't have enough money to buy the dominance check that just came out. So control of a region will require one of these tribes, remember. Uh, they'll actually get a political card now. Uh, the only two they can afford are Persia or Kandahar. And they prefer the cheapest one in that option. So they're going to get Kandahar. Current preference is left. Oh man, I feel like they're just going to crush me. And their current loyalty is British. They're going to place one tribe and one British army here. And they're going to get control of it. And a quick note that they would have gotten control even if the British army wasn't here, even though I'm friendly with the Afghans. Remember, they're friendly with everyone. So really, the only way to stop them from getting control once they have a tribe down is to have more tribes than them in that place. All right, next, they want to, oh, build. And they actually can because now they control a region. Oh, you know what? I did forget the Harati bandits. They get a free spy on this Harat card at the start of their turn. Darn it, even more cylinders down. But yeah, so they're going to build in Kandahar. They only have two rupees, so they're going to spend just to build a single army. Remember, that also always goes on the rightmost cards. If they had spent four, it would go to the next uh, column over. Six would go to the next column over. And she always has to build in the place that she controls, so there we go. And this time, she actually does not have to discard any cards because the purple card gives her the fourth uh, spot she needs. But we are going to slide all of these down. Now I'm dying for some spies to get more of my cylinders down, but uh, this Kandahar one would switch me to being British, and that would be kind of a disaster for a lot of the stuff that I've been building up. But the only other thing would be this guy all the way over here. Hmm, if I wanted to get more dominance for my armies and kind of ignore the cylinders, I could go for this cobble card. That would get me two roads. Nearly I have to come out of and go through Kabul, it would let me like run over to Kandahar with more people or run over to Herat and uh, smash all these guys and try to get dominance that way. I like that idea, so I'm going to go ahead and buy this for free. And I guess I'll lay it down, although uh, I'm going to have too many cards, so I'll have to trash one. All right, so that lets me put two roads. I guess I need to get these guys out into somewhere more useful. And yeah, let's get them to where all these targets are. Yeah, so I got my free action, so I will tax away, as always, with this guy, and then pay it to them for their darn hostage. But I will attack some more. And here I'm going to show you a fun little rule, which is the overthrow rule. So I can attack a tribe in the space with my army. I don't have to attack the armies. And uh, this goes back to their board. But the tribes and the purple cards are inextricably linked. So whenever you lose your last tribe in a region, you have to kill all your purple cards that are related to that region, or vice versa. If I had uh, betrayed this guy away, then he would have had to lose the tribe. So this guy gets discarded automatically. Awesome. Now I do have to throw away a card because I have two purple stars, but I have six cards. That's one more that I can hold. So I could throw away the Punjab one to get rid of this hostage, but that's my uh, only strong, consistent battle action, so I don't really want to do that. I certainly don't want to throw away other my purple cards. I don't want to get rid of this other guy, because, again, I like the free actions. So I guess the Persian one is better, because you'll note that the Kabul one has a better taxation and a better movement action. I'll probably be using that movement in a moment. But I am going to lose two rupees, because uh, I'm losing the leverage card that gave them to me originally. All right, that dominance card is sliding down further, and I'm not ready for it yet. All right, Wakan, you jerk. <laughs> what are you going to do me this turn? Right, they're going to radicalize an intelligence card. 
Right, so they can buy an intelligence card for free. Um, it's going to get them two more spies. Darn it. And also a leverage for two more rupees. Now, thank God it's still Kandahar, which uh, I do not have any cards for, so I'm not going to put the spies on me to uh, make me have to pay bribes. Let's see, it goes to the right in their tableau. And they get the spies, and their money's up to four. And next they're going to move. Oh, and they actually did just get a move action, so they can come to try to attack me. And uh, how she moves is she'll only look for adjacent regions. She'll only move armies. And she is British this round, which means she can move these British armies. And she wants to get to where my tribes are and only have as many armies there as there are tribes. So even though she had two movements, she's only going to move one guy there, which means if she gets a battle, she can kill my tribe. But lucky for me, she does have to discard a card, which mean, will mean a spy goes away. Very happy about that. Let's see. She doesn't want a patriot, so they're safe. Uh, she wants the fewest spies, so it's going to be one of these. Uh, lowest rank, so she'll get rid of the Harati bandits. Uh, so no more free spies if she got another Harat card. Right, things are moving down. Don't show me another not dominance card. I'm not ready. I have a mind to kind of ignore playing cards this turn and just go on a warlike rampage. Because I could uh, like kill this guy, then move both these armies over, and then with my double action, kill two roads and really try to set myself up for to be in the lead. I'll almost be dominant after doing that. Yeah, let's make that the way to go. So first I'll use one non-free action to use his uh, single combat icon. Then I'll get rid of these guys so that the British are not threatening my tribe. Then I'll use my second action to do a double move. Now, sadly, I can only do one army at a time. Uh, or I mean, I could have moved two of them there, but I want to be able to attack again. Okay, and then I'll tax for one like normal, and I'll pay Wakan one to attack. So looking at dominance, I want to get rid of uh, Russians first, and I just got to get rid of one of each. So uh, what the hey, let's just get rid of one of these roads. All right, my two cards in hand, my tab below, that's all okay. And I did not buy anything, and let's see, Wakanda's five rupees, so still pretty far away from being able to afford the dominance check. Right, let's see how she responds. Okay, so, oh, she is going to move, uh, but with Russian armies, which there aren't any of, and she has no battle action, so she's just going to radicalize. So she wants the zero on the bottom. Oh, man, that's bad. Uh, so I think I've been dreading it's going to happen. She's going to get a tribe down in Persia and gain control of that. But the big thing is she's going to change the preferred suit to blue, which is going to give her two free actions per turn and me none currently. Yeah, there's kind of a worst case situation at the moment. So she places a tribe there. She gains control of Persia. It's going to the right in her tableau. And the preferred suit's going to be blue. Now we go back down. She can't move. Oh, but she can battle now. The guy she just bought has a single battle icon. And she'd prefer to kill my tribes, but here the only thing she can kill is uh, one of my armies. So that puts things back closer to parity. And now, sad for me, she uh, does get to do some free actions. So first she'll do a free build for, uh, I guess it's, yeah, four. And that's going to totally mess up my plans to have dominance. Oh, wait, wait, you know what? I messed up. She's actually uh, with Russians this turn, so she will not battle my guy, which means I think, uh, yeah, she's going to uh, radicalize again. And that means she'll get these guys. Oh, which will actually change the preferred suit to orange. So, okay, she's only going to get one free action this turn, not two. I guess that's better. Right, so here we go. She's going to get one army in the Punjab. That does not make me happy because now my tribe's in danger. And yeah, we're back down to a new preferred suit. And uh, she wants to tax. Now, she could tax me if she had any Persia cards, uh, but she does not. So she can just grab the one rupee on the uh, dominance card, and that'll be it. And speaking of the dominance card, I have to act fast because uh, I am not... No! Darn it, darn it, darn it. So let's show you what could have happened this turn <laughs> if that card had not come out and forced an immediate dominance check, which I am clearly going to lose. Uh, I could have attacked once... Uh, then move two, and then attack twice. Let me show you on the map what that would have looked like. So I could have defeated the uh, British troop. That would have put me four ahead of them. And then I could have moved twice to here, and then defeated two of these Russian roads, and that would have put me four ahead of them. And then when the dominance came out, I would have been the dominant faction, and I have more influence than the AI does. So that would have evened us up. I'm not saying that I would have been like winning or anything, but at least that would have been uh, better. And I could have done that even though red is not the favorite suit anymore because that would have been a free action since uh, yellow is the favorite suit. And then I could have done the attack and the other attack for my two regular actions. But alas, it is not to be. I have only three cylinders out. Never really got my uh, spies going very well. 
And they have a whopping eight. So since nobody is dominant, they crush it and uh, clearly pull ahead. They get up to six points. I get up to two. They are ahead by four. So that is all she wrote. Wakan took me down with an incredible spy game that I could not match even with some nice uh, military maneuvering. So that's Pax Mayor second edition. Uh, check out my review if you're interested and we will see you at the next stop.